Today's review is sponsored by Sheldon's Moving Company. We may not be fast, but we're at least careful with your valuables. Well, not really because turtles don't have thumbs, but hey, we're trying. Watch it, Alan. I'm shooting. Kill, baby, kill. I haven't talked about Mario Bava enough on this channel, and that's a shame on me. Being an Italian horror fan, I have to acknowledge one of the most important directors in Italian horror. Bava is to Italian filmmaking what Hitchcock was to American filmmaking. He was very important. Mario Bava essentially started the giallo movement in Italy, starting with The Girl Who Knew Too Much, and following it up shortly with Blood and Black Lace. He was also a master at gothic horror, directing Black Sunday, which is my favorite movie by him, Black Sabbath, and of course the movie we're talking about today, Kill Baby Kill. <laughs> What we have here is a ghost story with a creepy little girl, showing once again how terrifying children can be. A small Italian village has been plagued by a rash of unexplained deaths, where each victim has bled to death. Dr. Paul Esway has been called in to do an autopsy on the most recent victim because nobody can tell if it was an accident, suicide, or murder. What's the meaning of this? Who gave you the order to bury her? Didn't I tell you not to? The doctor came here especially to perform an autopsy first. So not touch the dead. It's against nature. Take her back to the cottage. This being a village soaked in superstition, nobody's happy to see him. As the doctor continues his investigation, he soon learns that the village is cursed, haunted by the spirit of a murderous little girl. To me! I didn't say so! I didn't what say so! What did I saw her face at the window! You saw her, Nadine? First and foremost, this movie looks gorgeous. It's a beautifully shot movie. It's a beautiful looking movie. Mario Bava used to be a set designer, and because of that, he loved to show off his sets in his movies. There are a lot of sweeping shots of rooms and buildings. I haven't talked about too many ghost movies on this channel. I enjoy me a good ghost movie. I enjoy me a good haunted house movie. It's just that there are other genres I like talking about more. Kill Baby Kill is a ghost movie in the vein of something along the lines of The Devil's Backbone. Due to a wrongful death, the ghost comes back to exact revenge on the living, whether it be of their own free will or because somebody is controlling them. Melissa had lost her ball and ran after it. They trampled her with her horses. She begged for mercy. But they were too drunk to hear. That seems to be the case with many ghost movies. We see that in Candyman, Ringu, Juan, Dark Water, a lot of Japanese ghost movies, but others as well. It's all about some kind of dark secret that's slowly being revealed as the ghost kills people. That's what we get in Kill Baby Kill. <laughs> I do like the title, but it's weird for a movie like this. Kill Baby Kill sounds like it would be a more appropriate title for something like a giallo movie, a slasher flick, or some kind of bloody, violent, gritty exploitation movie. It would probably be a better title for something like I Drink Your Blood, but it is a title that grabs you. 
The other titles were Curse of the Dead, Curse of the Living Dead, Operation Fear, pretty generic titles. Kill Baby Kill may not fit a gothic horror movie, but it is a title that leaps out at you and makes you want to watch the movie. Death. Where you can find no door, you will come no more. Let's talk about the ghost of this flick, Melissa Grapp. She's creepy. <laughs> Creepy kids are a staple of the horror genre. Melissa Grapp has a good, simple design. She's just a pale little girl in a fancy dress. She has these wide, piercing eyes, and she never seems to blink. And they use her well. She's not on screen a lot, but in a good ghost movie, you're supposed to feel the presence of the spirit throughout the film. We feel Melissa's presence all the time. The bell rope isn't moving. She has this white ball that she bounces around. There are moments where it comes bouncing in out of nowhere, similar to that infamous scene from The Changeling. We hear Melissa laughing. She doesn't talk, she only giggles. But never when she's on screen, only after she disappears, or we see a part of her body, like a hand or something, and hear her giggle. We never see her face when she's giggling. There's this great scene where there's somebody in the house, and then it cuts to the outside, and the camera hands over, and we see Melissa's feet as she's going back and forth on a swing. <laughs> this scene is genuinely creepy, and I don't know why. It's just the way the camera moves, the mix of the music and the atmosphere, it works. The kills are not that bloody, apart from a pretty gory kill in the opening, especially for 1960. But we do get some bloodshed here, but this is a movie that came out in 1966, so a lot of the kills are off-screen, and then the body is revealed later. But it works. We do get some blood and some morbid imagery, these people are made to bleed to death, not die quick, painless deaths. Kill Baby Kill is, ironically, not about the kills, and more about the suspense and the gothic atmosphere. It captures that fun, spooky feeling you want from gothic horror movies. Not only do we have these sweeping shots of old buildings, we have some creepy cemetery scenes, and we also have the village witch trying to protect people from the ghost. You wouldn't understand the people here, Doctor. Everyone knows there's a curse over them. Irena Hollander's death was predictable to us. It also gets kind of trippy at certain moments. We have these scenes where people get caught in these sort of time loops, and they're going through the same room or corridor over and over and over again. That's my favorite scene in the movie. My only complaint is the ending. I won't spoil it here, but let me explain. The third act of this movie is so good. The tension builds and builds, everything feels like it's coming to a head, but once everything is resolved, it feels kinda anticlimactic. Let's just say, it feels like the movie is building towards something, and there's going to be a real struggle during that something. But instead of ending with a bang, the movie ends with more of a... Uh... Nothing's happening. It's over. A lot of people in the audience look pissed. If Kill Baby Kill had a stronger ending, this would be much higher on my list of Mario Bava movies. It's still a good movie, and I highly recommend it to fans of Mario Bava and gothic horror, but 
If it had a stronger ending, this would be in my top three Bava flicks. Despite the lackluster ending, I do love Kill Baby Kill. If you're a fan of gothic horror, you'll like this one. If you're a fan of creepy kids, you'll like this one. Same goes for fans of ghost movies. This is a solid, spooky movie that I think you'll enjoy. And with that, let's get to the Grindhouse rankings. We've got a body count of six. The kills are mostly off-screen deaths, but we do get some violent reveals like seeing some slit throats and a fire poker through the gut. We do get a nice fence impaling, though. There's a good gothic atmosphere. As soon as the movie starts, you know you're in for a good spooky time. Melissa is a good ghost girl. She has an effective, simple design and these creepy eyes. The movie looks beautiful, but that's not surprising for a Mario Bava flick. The ending is a little disappointing, but it doesn't ruin the movie. Not much else to say, it's just a solid gothic horror movie. I'm giving this a 4.2 out of 5. It could have been higher with a better ending, but overall this is still a very good movie. As always, I want to thank everybody for continuing to watch and support this channel. Please leave a comment down below. Let me know some of your favorite ghost movies. This is The Maniac, here to remind you that the grindhouse will never die. <laughs> Shut up.